All right, guys, hey, thanks for joining me. John Stevens, Maple Grove Farm. All right, so, <clears throat> 60 inch soil health versus 30 inch full tillage corn. <clears throat> soil health, it's not just about no-till and cover crops. It's about nutrient placement and timing, getting rid of broadcast fertility and being more dollar wise with your inputs. Herbicides, it's not just going organic. Maybe you're still using a one or two pass system, but we're being a little more efficient with it, a little more scouting with it, a little more careful with it. Uh, we're not just broad acre insecticide and pesticiding stuff, a little more field by field management kind of deal. If you have aphids, you spray aphids. If you don't have aphids, you don't just spray insecticide as a preventative measure kind of deal. You know what I mean. And uh, so, so all them things and reducing tillage, we don't mean zero till, we mean parking the disc gripper for first step maybe just using a vertical till or a light field cultivator whatever you have uh, to so because you might still need to do something while your soil transitions so just so we know where we're at on soil health, it doesn't mean zero till zero commercial fertilizer and zero herbs like you got to go 100% organic no 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 We'll, we'll get to the Gabe Brown in 40 years, you know, we'll all be to that level. But for right now, we're transitioning. So 60 inch soil health corn versus 30 inch full tillage corn, 180 bushel versus 140 bushel, or 180 versus 130. How on earth can we think that that 60 inch is gonna work? Them ladies right there. That is our dollars for the 60 inch. One, our 60 inch, so on our 30 inch full tillage program, we followed soybeans <clears throat> and we did a, a disc ripping in the fall. Then the next spring we take a digger and we do a warm and dry up pass. Then we fed it broadcast spread, a recommended fertilizer rate. And then you might have a pre-emerge or, or whatever. Um, but then you plant and then we, or you finish, you have a finished pass, then we plant, then we roll. And then maybe there's your pre-emerge program. And, uh, and then a little while later is a post-emerge program. We're on the soil health side. <clears throat> we either did just a, a minimum tillage pass or no tilled in. <clears throat> we, the crop is up and running. We banned next to the plant at a very reduced rate fertilizer program. Maybe we did a pre-emerge and then we're using cover crops to replace the post-emerge herbicide. And uh, that, that's it. That's it. That, that, then, then we just sit back and watch it grow. <clears throat> but the other thing with soil health is it's, it's a long-term game. So on the conventional till side, we're building nothing. We are fixing no issues. So then behind the corn, what do we have to do? Well, we have to disc rip because our soil will just be too wet and mucky and cold in the spring because it has no structure, no infiltration rate, no health. So we still got to do all that tillage, all that fertilizer, all that herbicide over again. On the soil health 60, we're going to bring in cows we're going to graze it. We're going to really cover crop the heck out of it. We're going to build legumes in between here for a really as much nitrogen program as we can. The corn and the covers are really going to beat all our compaction down deep. The covers are really going to fix our, our, our infiltration and our shallow tiltiness for being able to plant nicely into this soil. And the next year we're going to come in with corn again. 60 inch and 60 inch. We split the difference. Boom. The second year is very nice and again another year of very low input very well managed inputs and we make good money days of days off of feed is easy math to do and it adds up very very fast animal unit monthly credits AUMs add up very very fast on corn <clears throat> but so let's bring this back to the full till it to a normal guy, corn and bean guy. What are you gonna do? Well, on a corn and bean guy, what if uh, first year full tillage program like normal? We got the 60 inch corn in, but we bring in intensive cover crops. Same thing, you want them cover crops to just build. And year two, same thing. Now year two is very reduced tillage, very reduced inputs. You're managing your, in, your, your fertility dollars a lot better. You're doing some better type of soil testing to see what you have out here. And you're kind of buying what you need. <clears throat> so that second year of corn on corn is 60 inch. Maybe that year the inputs really come down and you don't have cattle. 
So how are we gonna make that money up? Well, on year three, we can come out here and we can go then into soybeans. There's no chilling because by now, that soil, if you had a lot of covers and a lot of corn, that soil ought to just be taken off. You just no till. Maybe you're still convinced that you need a vertical till, whatever. <laughs> Dust it up, put your beans in. Big, beautiful beans because you've had a couple years of mineralizing going on. Big, beautiful beans. You bring them out, and behind the beans, you throw some winter wheat. So the following spring, you keep that tiltiness going. You're fixing infiltration rates. You're healing that soil. So it's a lot easier by year four to just plant your corn again. It's just a wonderful system. But keep in mind, not everybody going to 60-inch corn is going to see a yield loss, and not everybody's going to go to 60-inch corn. 99% they're, they're, of people aren't going to go to 60-inch corn. <clears throat> but... Four and a half hours south here, there's guys doing 60 inch corn that got a better yield than their 30 inch. Well, how hard is that math to do? That's not hard math to do. That's pretty easy math to do. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's a weird system, but we have to remember this is a long-term gain and uh, long-term game. And so, I don't know, on that one, guys, I think we'll just leave it right there. Your comments below, your questions below and uh, see what you guys are thinking.